would lose our capacity for self-governance on this world. We have to act. So in answer to your question, I would say we have to have a sense of urgency much greater than we have yet had, and we need have had, and we need to make some changes of the land and creating the droughts and melting the ice and raising the sea level and causing these waves of climate refugees predicted to reach one billion in this century. Look at the xenophobia and political authoritarian trends that have come from just a few million refugees. What about a billion? We yes, Agor is facing massive criticism on social media after he had this interview on CNN, the survival of our civilization is at stake. He made some predictions in the past, like when I draw back to 2006 and they never came to pass, a god threatened US will lose self-governance if action is not taken on the climate says there will be number one billion climate refugees I don't know if you have seen this very concerning. This same ago, I think I put out a video last January where he said oceans are burning. When I take a look at this article, scientists ago go on his run on climate change and World Economic Forum claims oceans are boiling, creating rain bombs. You can clearly see at the beginning of this clip what he said. But what happens if the world doesn't act? What, what's the worst case scenario? Well, the scientists who warned us of these mega storms and the, the floods and mudslides and droughts and the ice melting and the sea level rising and the storms getting stronger and the tropical diseases and uh, climate migrants crossing international borders in larger numbers, they were dead right when they warned us about this. And so we need to pay more attention to them now. Here's one thing they say, if we don't take action, there could be as many as one billion climate refugees crossing international uh, borders in the next several decades. Well, a few million has contributed to this uh, wave of populist authoritarianism and dictatorships and so forth. Uh, what would a billion do? We can't do this. We could lose our capacity for self-governance. Already we're seeing people driven from the places they've always called home, and we're seeing an expansion of areas in the world that are, are physiologically unlivable now because of the combination of heat and humidity. They're relatively small areas now, but if we don't act, they will expand to include most of India, large parts of uh, northern South America, the Philippines, Indonesia, Pakistan, the list goes on. Uh, our, the survival of our civilization is at stake, and it sounds dire, but it is dire. And, and But again, the good news is we can reclaim control of our destiny if we summon the, the political will and the courage and the moral courage to do it. You know, there's a European politician, Claude Juncker, who said, we all know what to do. We just don't know how to be reelected if we do it. Well, uh, this is why grassroots pressure uh, from people who understand how high the stakes are is the critical element. And the good news, again, is people are rising up and demanding action. Your new CNN poll shows that more than three quarters of Americans, including uh, a majority, 76 percent of independents and more than half of the Republicans, support action. We just have to break the political power that the fossil fuel industry has uh, exerted with its fixers and its lobbyists and its bags of money and its revolving door colleagues. But we can do this, Jake. We can do it. Vice President Al Gore, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time today, sir. Thank you, Jake. Yes, he said climate refugees. We will have people, you know, fluctuating these areas because of this, because of that. That is extremely concerning. Now, when you take a look at what these climate activists are doing, I don't know if they are actually contributing or trying to solve the problem. What exactly is going on? 
These same people are actually the ones still contributing to this because they still take private jet. You know, like I saw an interview, Big Gate, where a question like this surface. Sometimes I don't want to question things like this. I just want to report the news because it is ridiculous when I see people like this passing out this message in this manner. There is still a better way, you know, to really make people to understand that something like this is happening without putting the message in a frightening way. Oceans are burning. This is happening. Climate refuge, you know. To speak up. And the good news is that's happening too. So you say we can fix this. What needs to happen? Well, we need to we need to break through this blockade uh, that the fossil fuel industry and the big petro states uh, have been using to to block progress. We also need to reform this UN process because it requires a what they call consensus now, which is similar to requiring it to be unanimous if the president of the COP uh, decides that they don't see any objections, then he declares there's a consensus. And that's why it's so important that that person who's in charge of the process not have a direct conflict of interest. Yes, on Sunday, former Vice President Ago took the time to push Climate change hysterical during a appearance on CNN. During an appearance on CNN, he claimed that there will be upward of a billion climate refugee crossing international waters and attributed that to a wave of populist authoritarianism and dictatorship. Gov said the consequence of inactions could result in losing our capacity for self-governance. What happens if the world doesn't react? What is the worst case scenario? CNN Jack Tapper asked Ago, according to this news article, God said the scientist who has warned us of this mega storm, if we don't take action, there could be as many as 1 billion climate refugees crossing international borders in the next several decades where a few million have contributed authoritarianism and dictatorship and so forth. What will a billion do? We can't do this. We could lose our capacity for self-governance said our goal to tell the audience that the situation is there and added already. We have seen people driven from their places. They have always called home and we are seeing an expansion of areas in the world that unlivable now because of the con combinations of heat and humidity, they are relatively small areas now, but if we don't act, they will expand to include most of India, large part of Northern and South America, the Philippines, Indonesia, Pakistan, and this goes on. The survival of civilization is at stake and sounds there, but it's there, he said. Ago has faced criticism for this tendency to embellish the fact when making predictions about the extinction of humanity as a result of climate change.